guys, welcome to an exciting episode of Studio 45 Online. My name is Jesse, I'm so glad you could join us today as we wrap up our big idea of responsibility. This month we've been talking about responsibility, which we define as showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. And we've got a great wrap up for today. But before we get to that, we wanna remind you about something fun we've been doing all month long. It's called a responsibility race. The great thing is if you've been coming on the weekend, you know we've been playing games in Studio 45, fourth grade boys against fourth grade girls against fifth grade boys against fifth grade girls to see which small group can be declared the winner. But even if you can't come on the weekend, you can actually still participate. Everybody is welcome to participate in our midweek challenges that go up on Wednesday. Every time you complete one of those challenges, you earn 5,000 points for your team. And if you can't come on the weekend and you're watching our videos online, you can actually get points for your team just by letting us know that you participated in our game. And today we've got a fun game that we call Crowd Charade. So if you participate and your parents go to newspring.org slash responsibility race, right after you're done watching this video, you could earn some points for your team. The great thing is for those that are in our services on the, on the very next weekend, the first weekend of February, they're gonna win an awesome prize for their, whichever small group that wins. But if you're playing online for us and you played the online weekend games, you could win a movie night for your family. So make sure you let us know if you participated. Right now, we're gonna play the game. If you participate afterwards, you can go to newspring.org slash responsibility race and hit the charade slash mad gap. In 2v2, they're playing mad gap. So hit the charade slash mad gap button and let us know you participated. Now, to play this game, it's very simple. We're gonna put an image up on the screen because we call this act now. It's very simple. We put an image up on our TV and then you have somebody stand in front of it or in front of whatever you're watching on. And then the crowd has to try to act out what they see on the screen. If you want to make this competitive at home, you can divide into two teams and whoever's doing the guessing can earn points. So we're going to show you an example of what this would look like with Miss Alicia and Mr. Chris. Check it out. Um, whoa. Uh... <laughs> Rowing. Um, um... Oh, there's a jump. Um, oh my... Um... <laughs> oh, ski! <laughs> Okay, does that make sense? So here we go, we're gonna put our first image up, get whoever is going to be doing the guessing in front of the screen so they can't see what's behind them, and then whoever's gonna be acting out for them to guess, go ahead and get ready. Remember, you can't use your words. Let's go. Second round, let's see what you have to act out. Okay, here we go. Third and final round for you guys at home. See if you can act this out. had fun with that game. I know we had fun here. One thing is definitely for sure. If you were watching or you were trying to get them to act it out, words are a very powerful thing. In fact, that is what our story is all about today. Let's check it out. The Bible is more than a single book. It's a collection of 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry written by dozens of different authors over thousands of years that all come together to tell one big story. It's a bigger story than you can even imagine. It's a big story about a really big God and 
what he did to rescue us. It shows us who we are and what we were created to do. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey guys, I'm really excited to give you our story for today. It actually comes out of one of the books of your Bible that originally started as a letter. It was a letter that Paul wrote, and we're actually only looking at one verse, Ephesians 4.29. So if you want to look it up in your Bible, you can do that. Before we get to that, I just kind of wanted to recap a little bit of this month. This is responsibility, showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. But if we kind of wipe that off the page real quick, let's just talk a little bit about what did we actually talk about this month as it comes down to the big idea of responsibility. Well, the first week we started with what are things that you're expected to do? And of course, we looked at, you know, we all have it, we all have responsibilities, we all have expectations, we all have things that are expected of us, but there is one thing that's really the most important. And we know this because Jesus told it to us. It was love God and love others. And then the second week, we looked at a story that Jesus told about a rich man, right? And the question we ended with was, hey, what do you have that you can share? The rich man didn't share, and God said, hey, if you want to be rich in God's eyes, you need to share with others and so that was the question we asked about and I hope you really thought about some things that you could do to share. Uh, the third week we talked about this. We said, hey, when have you had to work hard? Remember we said, how do we know what's expected of us? When we go to the book of Proverbs, it says, go to the ant. Look at the ant and how hard it works. God has designed that and God has designed you for work and that's a good thing. And then last week, we had a lot of fun. Mr. Chris came down. He was drawn for us. We heard the parable of the talents, and we talked about how can you use what you've been given. Well, this week, we've got an awesome question, but before we get to it, I think we should look at really the, the essence of this week is just one thing. We're looking about responsibility as it relates to specifically our words, the words we use. Now, here's the interesting thing. I feel like most of us are used to hearing words. We hear them all the time. But the truth is, sometimes we can get into thinking that our words don't have much weight. Like for instance, have you ever heard this phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words, what? You know it at home, you can finish it for me, will never hurt me. I mean, you've heard that before. Maybe you've even said that before. But is it true? Is it true that sticks and stones may break your bones? Well, sure, but words will never hurt me. I think we can all think of a time when this was not true, that words did hurt us. And what does that mean? And what do we do about it? And are we responsible for them? Are we responsible for the words that come out of our mouths? And here's the interesting thing. You're watching this on YouTube. You as a generation, fourth and fifth graders, face a challenge that none of your parents faced, none of your grandparents faced. I didn't even really, to the extent you will, face this challenge. And it's that not only are we responsible for the words we say, but there's also words that we text, that we type, that we send out in all kinds of different ways. In fact, to pick on myself just a little bit, I went back. I went back approximately uh, 14 years. So most of you, if you're a fourth or fifth grader, might not even have been alive yet. And I looked at some of the words I had to say, and I gotta tell you, it was kind of shocking. Like for instance, in 2007, Mr. Jesse put on Facebook that I was crying like Peter Parker. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure maybe I'd just seen the third original Spider-Man. Uh, and so anyways, but this is the image that I wanted associated with my name. I gotta say, I don't know if I still feel that way today. 2007 seems like a long time ago, but yet these words still exist on the internet. In fact, in that same year, I also said, I'm thinking we have stupid cars, which probably made my cars feel really bad. I don't know, maybe it didn't. The point is though, in 2007, I was thinking about my car, because I don't know, maybe it broke down, maybe I got a flat tire, but I put it out there, and because of the internet, as great as it is, it is still here 14 years later. That's crazy. Okay, how about this one? 
hates the swine flu. This is like our COVID-19, okay? Way back in 2009, this is what we were doing with, I had no idea what was ahead. I mean, we were just talking about sick pigs. We, COVID-19 has shut down the world. I had no idea what I was talking about. And, and this is true for all of us, right? Maybe your parents have done this. Maybe you haven't quite gotten into this yet, but it's something to think about because your words do have a lot of power and they can go a long, long ways into the future, which makes everything we say or type or text or post or send to a friend makes me think twice about it. I tell you what, I kind of want to show you what this looks like. And to do that, I'm going to call Alicia up here to help me. We're going to use an experiment to kind of see what it looks like and how much power our words have. But before we do that, I want to go to the one verse that I was talking about, Ephesians 4.29. You ready for this, Alicia? Okay, we're going to have, we have two balloons here. These balloons are going to let, we're going to let represent people. And let me read this to you from Ephesians 4, 29. Like I said, if you have your Bible, you can read this with me. This is what Paul said. Now, Paul was writing to the church in Ephesus. Now, at the time, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or all the things and all the ways that we can talk to each other. But this is what he said. Paul says to the church in Ephesus, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Now, if Mr. Jesse is looking at that, I'm going to be honest. There are definitely some times, and you've even seen some, where I've let some unwholesome talk come out of my mouth, or things that maybe I wish that I didn't still have hanging around. Now, and even though you might not be posting things yet, even though you might not be texting things or putting things on the internet, the truth is, even when we talk, our words have staying power. They stick around. So, Alicia, if you would use this air pump, this is going to rep represent unwholesome talk. And I'm going to use this. And this is a water pump. And this is going to represent the talk that Paul tells us to do. The only, the only things that are helpful for building others up. And what I want you to see is when we take this balloon and we trap our words, we're going to let our words stick around. So often when we say something or maybe post something or write something down as a note, we think it just kind of goes away after a while. But go ahead and fill your balloon and let's see what happens. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Now listen, maybe you uh, go to your brother. He comes into your room without asking. And you say, you dummy. Just like that, you said a word that isn't building him up. And you might think, oh, that word's going to disappear. It's not like it hangs around. But the truth is, people can carry our words with them. And even though you might not think of it, your brother might be carrying that name that you called him. Or the kid on the school bus might be carrying that joke that you made at his expense. Or maybe that friend is carrying the note that you passed about her behind her back. What I love about Paul, though, is he says, hey, instead, don't just not do that. Instead, only what is helpful for building others up. See, the truth is, when we use our words for kindness, when we, when we speak good about someone behind their back, that fills them up, too. When we, when we say something kind about our brother to his face and we compliment him and we tell him how much we appreciate him, when we tell that kid on the school bus that, hey, he can sit by us, we would love it if he grabbed a seat by us. That fills a person up too. And the truth is that we all run into people that have had kind things said to them, and we run into people that have had cruel things said to them. And the truth is, actually, a lot of times, it's probably a little bit of both. Like, for instance, maybe you are kind to your brother, but at school... His friends say some unkind things. Go ahead and tie that off, Alicia. And we've got both of these people that we're bumping into and walking around to our world. And some of them have had things that have said to them that have filled them up. Things that have built them up like Paul talked about. And some of them have had things said about them that have torn them down. And a lot of times we think those words 
just evaporate. But the truth is they don't. And life for everybody is challenging, and life for everybody can be hard. But what I love about Paul is he's saying, your words have power. One more time, let's read this. Do not let any unwholesome talk, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Our words should build others and also our words should hit people where they are. Sometimes the way we talk to somebody has power simply because we recognize what their needs are. When we do that, it doesn't, what I love about this is there are some, there's some water in here that represents the good stuff that we say. And there's some air in here, right? That represents the things that are unwholesome. And the truth is, if you have someone that's filled up with a bunch of words that have been given to them as unwholesome, and they run around in this hard world, guess what happens? It makes it really hard to go through life. Watch this, Alicia. This is what I love. When we give people hope through our words, when we realize that our words we are not only responsible for, but those words build people up. Imagine your brother, right? He has a hard day at school. He's had, he's had cruel things said to him, or he's been picked on. But you come along, and you offer hope. And you offer kindness. And you say words that build him up. And you say words that speak to his identity, not in what people say about him, but what God says about him. Look what he can withstand. Isn't that amazing? This isn't a trick. Water absorbs all the heat. It's a really cool experiment, but it's a good visualization of what power your words have. The truth is, we're all going to face hard times, but when we realize that our words have power, we can help other people go through a lot. Because your words are going to stick around. Thanks, Lisa. Give her a round of applause if you're watching at home. So here's what I want to leave you with. Truth is, everybody is going to face hard times. And the truth is, everybody is probably going to have a mix of both of these. But what Paul is saying is your responsibility, if you want to show you can be trusted with what's expected of you, One of the best ways to do that is to be responsible with what comes out of your mouth. Because what comes out of your mouth sticks around. What comes out of your mouth has the power to get people through some hard times. It has the power to build them up and meet their needs. They're not just words. Whether they're written or texted or posted or Snapchatted, or even just set, they have power and we can be responsible for them. Let me pray for you. Father God, I pray for every kid that is watching this right now. Pray for every adult. Pray that we would realize we are responsible for the words that come out of our mouths. Let them build others up. Let them meet our needs. Father, help us to not let any unwholesome talk come from our lips or from our thumbs to our screens, or wherever we are are saying anything, God, whether it's written or said, we pray that it would point people to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, well, we really hope that you enjoyed that story. I really loved the way that Jesse did that experiment. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's, the first one scared me. Though. That's me. And I was jump. all the way back there. So. Yeah, it was very, very loud. <laughs> <laughs> but I really love that object lesson. Yeah. But Christopher, do you know what time it is? I think it is. Reveal the question. the question. Which is, why do the words matter? I think that's such an important question, especially yeah. after that story. And we really want you to talk with your family, your friends, whoever you're watching this video with, and just talk about that. Also the story too. Hey, why do your words matter? Yeah. And we would love to hear from you. You can tell us on our Facebook page. And yeah, yeah. We, we'd love to know what, love what you came up with when your fans, yeah. your friends and family. And don't forget, this Wednesday, we're gonna be doing the last responsibility race challenge, one, which is 5,000 points That's to your small points. group, which is a lot of points. It can change yes. the whole thing. It can also make up for past challenges, yes. but you gotta do it by Thursday. 
Thursday yes. by noon. That is the deadline. Yes. This is the last time to earn those points. But make sure you guys go to newspring.org slash responsibility race just to let us know that you guys did that challenge. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys. Bye.